Good uh, morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Star Business Solutions uh, uh, 2019 uh, webinar series. Today's topic will be Green Tree Query Tools. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to the uh, clients that actually emailed me direct uh, requesting this uh, topic. Um, as you, most of you know, our last uh, webinar was uh, at the end of June, and we normally do them every two months. But because of the demand and the requests that were forwarded, we decided to bring this one forward, and uh, both in uh, in line and in month-wise. So we're actually a month uh, early today. Um, as uh, most of you probably know, uh, the Green Tree Query tools have been developed over time, and uh, some are actually more intuitive than others, and that they are. Uh, uh, primarily to allow the creation of ad hoc reports, although um, some can be saved and used on an ongoing basis. Um, now, business intelligence tools such as ClickView, ClickSense are the next step up from query tools, uh, though we won't be covering those today. Um, and, and for those that aren't aware, you can now purchase ClickSense and uh, it will work within the Green Tree system, although we uh, as I said, we won't be uh, doing that today. Um, what I'd like you to do, if possible, is type any questions you may have uh, as you go through uh, the webinar today. And uh, we will look to answer those at the end of the webinar. Um, but uh, just so you don't forget, please type them into the uh, question section uh, as you go. Uh, as normal, our presenters today will be primarily uh, Josh Jiffy who is our, uh, well, up until uh, uh, Friday was our pre-sales engineer. Um, I'd just like to throw out to uh, everyone out there that Josh has just been promoted and he is now the general manager for sales at Star Business Solutions. So um, we're, um, we're taking his time away from his team today, um, but uh, you guys are the first to uh, hear the good news. In today's agenda, we tend to go through um, uh, Jade Query, Explorer, Query Designer, which is uh, the new uh, query tool within uh, uh, GreenTree, OBDC, and at the end, we will do uh, Q&A. So I'll hand over now to uh, Josh, who will give a, a demonstration and go through um, those various query tools. Thanks, Norman. Okay, so we'll, we'll dive on in. There's a, a fair bit of content to go through today. Um, some of it will be uh, a little bit more technical in nature than some of our previous webinars. Um, I'll try and uh, do my best to balance balance the knife edge there of, of uh, giving you enough content and detail to get an idea of what all the tools can do without going too far down the rabbit hole um, from a technical aspect. So we'll start off with uh, Jade Query. Jade Query, Query was one of the first uh, query tools available within MYB GreenTree. Uh, and so a lot of our clients um, have potentially been using this for, well, since, since day one. Um, the additional tools which I'll, I'll jump through have been added over time. So Jade Query has seen a couple of little facelifts um, over the years. Uh, so depending on uh, what version of GreenTree you're on, as well as, um, uh, well, when the last time you used it was, um, there might be some changes. So let's let's dive on into that first. So Jade Query um, gives you the ability to query any record uh, or any what's called class within GreenTree. Um, and one of to, uh, the um, points of today's session is to, to not just go through the tools, but really talk about some of the specifics of these tools that differ from each other. Um, so the Query, um, the jQuery tool uh, gives you access to pretty much all data within GreenTree. There are some security options that have been added um, uh, in the recent releases uh, to limit HR and payroll information, which I'll show a couple of examples shortly. Um, however, um, uh, I've gone through to set up a couple of scenarios to, to show how that works. So I can either look at my existing queries. So I've got a, a simple customer query here on the, the left-hand side. I can click on that and hit run query. And that's gonna go through and return me the results of what, um, what I had in my previously 
saved query. If I was to come in um, and hit edit on that query, I've then got the ability of selecting um, the filtering. So how are we filtering this query? Now Greentree is a multi-company environment. So I've currently got it just showing where the company code of the customer in this example is 01, but you could do um, you know, quite a, a large um, range of, of query options here. So it could be where customers uh, potentially have um, a certain amount in an overdue. Um, so I could come in and look at um, uh, potentially, let's go with that. Coming to the current period summary and maybe look at things like outstanding values. So only where the customer has some outstanding value. You can add as many of these uh, query options uh, as you'd like. So let's just come in and say, you no, know, it's greater than zero. Um, you do have a few options around this. So I'm just going to quickly change that for a second to do with uh, what's referred to as ands and ors. The thing here with jQuery, and this will become more relevant as we go through to Query Designer um, later on in today's session, is the and and or scenarios. Um, it is um, one option, not both. So um, you can't have what we often refer to as um, nested uh, filters or queries. Uh, it's a, a pretty simple um, selection criteria option. You then have the option of selecting which field you're interested in. So I've just gone and added um, the outstanding values. So it makes sense. I may as well add that to my, um, that my print fields content. And if I come in and hit do query, it uh, looks like there weren't any in with outstanding values. So let's just maybe take that um, a step back and go, well, instead of outstanding values, maybe I'm interested in year-to-date sales. So I can come in, I can add that in there as well. So I can, I can mix and match or um, play around with those numbers. So we'll come in with that. We'll add those in. And that's gone through and told me um, at the current period summary what the year to date sales might be. So it's a, it's a much smaller query than what I had previously, because of course being demonstration data, some of these customers uh, don't get used all that often. Um, so that's um, a pretty simple query there. We can save those results um, by exporting them to a, a text file. Um, and in addition, uh, you've got the ability of granting um, access to um, other users. So if I am looking at um, now a, a slightly different user, uh, so those who are more, more familiar with the user options, uh, the previous screen I was in, I was logged in as the super user. If I bring up my jQuery screen um, as a different user, you'll notice my select a query list is much smaller. So this is not showing that HR person query I had previously. So that's a, um, that's a change. So uh, there's a number of our clients that have, have been reluctant to grant Jade query to certain users because of the, the fact that that data was accessible um, to users that didn't have access to HR. So if you are um, using Jade query at the moment or interested in it, um, you do have the ability now with a user maintenance uh, if I have a look at uh, my user that I'm logged in as, which at the moment is super, there's a new button on the HR tab. So HR security, you'll see show HR data in Explorer and jQuery. So the user I was logged in as just before um, did not have that ticked. And as a result, the HR person query was not showing. So that's a, that's a, a new feature um, to jQuery. The HR is the only um, area which gets limited down. So uh, you may notice that I have a quotes query um, in my selection here. So once again, logged in as super. If I hit run query, I can see all the quotes. I can see the salesperson, the organization, and, and currently how much um, that quote was for. If I switch over to my other user, you'll notice at the top they don't have access to the CRM menu. However, they still have access to run uh, a jQuery um, that you've created um, or they have created uh, to show them information to areas of the system that they don't have a license for. Now that's both, a, um, I guess, a pro and a con. If you want to give access to people to run queries on information, 
um, in areas that they aren't um, regular users of, then that means you don't have to purchase a license for that module for that user. However, as I said before, that can give them uh, access to areas they, um, that you may not wish them to have access to, uh, which has been one of the hesitations uh, from some of our users um, on why um, people may avoid using jQuery. Now we will um, show how some of these um, uh, these items have been rectified in the new query designer tool, but we'll be covering that a little later. So that's uh, that's jQuery. Uh, the next one I wanted to touch on was a, a tool called Explorer. So Explorer has been around for, for a number of years now. Uh, its um, mindset is to take what's in jQuery and add a little bit to it. Um, as well from a, a perspective of security, but also from a perspective of ease of use. So with jQuery, you needed to have um, a, an idea of the, the class structure or table structure within uh, MYB Greentree. With Explorer, you can get away with, uh, with without knowing as much information um, to get what you're, in, um, what you're after. So if I was to come into the customer maintenance screen, You'll see a little icon here. Now that icon used to be uh, a torch. Uh, it's now uh, a compass, uh, but that refers to our Explorer tool. So that's a user preference. You can either have this turned on or off um, uh, at, a, at a user level. So if I come in and, and click that icon, I've got um, the ability of doing an Explorer query on this specific um, record type from the screen I just came from. So you'll see at the top, it's got the focus telling it there's uh, 24 customers. If you've previously saved selections, you've got the ability of selecting those from the drop-down list. Unlike jQuery, where it was a shared collection of queries, Explorer is unique to the user. So if I was to log in as a different user, they would not see this list. They would see their own list of saved selections. So if I come into my uh, top one here, I've got the ability of adding uh, filters. So similar in nature to what we were looking at um, on, on jQuery. However, it's a bit more of a drag and drop tool. I can press the plus, find uh, the property that I'm interested in um, by, by searching through. Um, so that could be um, all kinds of uh, different options. I might want to do a filter on the salesperson or that filter I did previously where they had the year-to-date um, sales. I can expand that, drag and drop, and say that is greater than zero. One of the benefits of Explorer as far as creating these filters is you do actually have this additional option of don't filter. So you can create quite complex um, filters with lots of different saved um, filter options but maybe you wanna mix and match those um, at any given point in time. So rather than having to every time create a new filter, dragging different fields, you can create one large list of filters and just mark them as don't filter. And as you wanna pick and choose them, you can come in and do just that. If I was to come into my query columns tab, I can do that same thing of drag and drop. So we'll just uh, drop that in um, up the top there. If I was to hit search now, that's going to go through. It said it's found 10 out of my 24 uh, records. Uh, so uh, telling me once again how many there were previously and how many the filter has returned. For those that have larger data sets, and maybe it might not be on the customer, um, customer record or, or focus, it might be on maybe the invoice focus or the inventory item or something else. Um, you'll notice that there is this load the first um, process. So those that are unfamiliar with query tools, if you've got quite a large data set and you put potentially too vague a filter and maybe it's going to return too much information, sometimes that can take a little bit of time. So this is something that will only return the first however many. So in this example, 1,000. However, um, if, you were, if you did have a larger data set, you do have the option of coming in and saying, well, all right, I want to include 10,000 or 100,000 um, uh, different records. 
As I said before, um, these save selections uh, user specific. So if I come into um, uh, my other user for a second and bring up Explorer, you'll notice that there's nothing in the save selections drop down box. You'll also notice that while I can see all the different records of, uh, of focus, if I was to come into, for example, some of the CRM areas, so scroll down a little further, um, and let's go with um, uh, organizations. Then if I came in and showed the organization name and hit search now, you'll notice that it returned nothing because I don't have access to that screen. So it does um, respect um, uh, screen-based security at this point. So it takes that Explorer option, uh, sorry, that jQuery uh, process we're going through and adds that, that security layer um, to it. The other thing that you might find with um, doing something like Explorer is once you've got that data, it's what do you want to do with it? Um, so there's lots of different ways of, um, of viewing uh, this data. So I can hit that search now like I have here and I've, I've shown it in a table format. Um, I've got the ability of exporting it to Excel. So I can come in here and, and say export to Excel and that's going to open up my Excel spreadsheet. Um, it's, it's worth noting here that when you export it to Excel in this manner, the fields respect the field type they are. So for those that have exported information to Excel um, previously, you may know you may have noticed that there's some quite often some teething or pain points that you might have around Excel thinking that something is a number field. So if you had, for example, uh, an invoice number which started with 001000, um, then Excel might say, hey, I know that, that's a number field, and just show 1000. So it, it thinks it knows best. Whereas this will, as I said, respect dates as dates, numbers and, as numbers, and text as text. So that's one way of getting the data out. Obviously, that is um, a data dump. So um, there is now no longer a link between that data and Greentree. As those numbers change, I would have to potentially do another export. One of the other options you've got, though, uh, beyond that, you know, there's also CSV in a text file, but you'll notice that there's this export to report writer option. So those that, um, that potentially want to have this as uh, um, a reusable uh, report rather than a, a data dump kind of scenario, I can hit export to report writer. It'll open up uh, a create report writer wizard, which has three very simple steps. First of all, the title. So let's just go customer balances, uh, whether or not it's portrait or landscape. Um, I'm going to go landscape in this example because I've got a relative, I've got a reasonable number of columns. It will then do its best to um, uh, uh, do names. Uh, for those column headings, but I can come in and override them. So let's just go with year to date sales, um, and I'm just going to leave the rest of the columns as is. You've got some quick options of creating totals and subtotals. So I can say, all right, I want to create a total for the year to date sales. Actually, let's do it for all the numeric numbers. I can then come in uh, and hit uh, hit next, and it then gives me that that final third option of whether or not I'm simply opening this in Report Writer or I'm saving this as a report. So let's just hit, um, let's hit Save As and hit Finish. That's gonna launch my Report Writer. It's going to have added all those fields and some of them it's renamed for me and others I potentially may have to do myself. Um, it's added those totals. And if I wanna just have a quick look and hit Print Preview, that's gone in and that's now a reusable report uh, which I can run on a regular basis. Um, I don't have to go back through the Explorer queries. Um, I can just do them straight from the report menu. Now, what I've found a number of users use this for is a starting point. So trying to, to get the, the basis of a report um, uh, going, you might then decide you want some more detail added to that report. And at that point, it's just a green tree report writer report. You can add, edit, delete things as you see fit. It's just a nice handy tool to get you started. Okay, so that is uh, Explorer. 
that is jQuery. Now let's jump into the new, new tool, uh, which is uh, referred to as Query Designer. So Query Designer um, is made up of a number of screens. Uh, and within that, uh, that gives you a, a, a range of different security options as well. So if I was just to come to my system menu, utilities, you'll and you'll see the five main screens that relate to this tool. Uh, if you've got a situation where you want people to view the results of queries, you can give them just access to results viewer, which means they can't create their own, only run the ones you give them access to. So how does it all work? Well, let's start um, from the top here. We'll, we'll, we'll bring up our, what we call view builder. And I'll, I'll predominantly um, spend most of my time in, in ones I've prepared earlier, but just um, I'll add an um, add fields as we go. So we've spent a little bit of time on customer so far. So let's jump on over to maybe this um, JC job view as an example. And so what you've got is the data view tab. So these are the fields I've added so far. It's telling me the property names. Um, it's created display headings, or I can potentially add them myself. And you've got the ability on numeric fields of defining whether or not there's a total function, which can be total, average, maximum, or minimum. On the right-hand side, you'll see two main um, components. There's what we call data elements and permissions. I'm going to focus on the data elements first and then we'll jump into permissions in a moment. So I've got the ability of viewing any database field. Um, and from a technical aspect, it also um, allows you to view what's referred to as non-parameterized methods, um, which basically means bits of code that Greentree programmers or star programmers have created um, to return certain pieces of information. Now that could be um, calculations, that could be complex, uh, linking between records, all kinds of different reasons why we might have those. And you'll also notice it's slightly different layout to some of the other query tools. Instead of the plus symbol that you may be familiar with a number of the, the tools, um, where it then indents the screen, because of the, um, the number of layers you can go down within uh, the view and query builders, we've, uh, we've Greentree has gone with the um, mentality of a slightly different layout. So if I come in and maybe I'm interested in something to do with the account manager. So I can come into this search up the top and start typing. And that's going to show me all the fields on currently the JC job table or class that have a double C somewhere in the field name. So I can press the little um, expand here and it's telling me where I'm currently up to. So I'm, I'm in the My Account Manager, and in brackets, it tells me the class of that record, and I can keep going as far down as I need to go. So maybe I'm just interested in showing the first name. Maybe I'm interested in showing um, uh, the salutation, uh, the usual name, lots of different options, but I can come in and drag and drop that uh, into my uh, data view area. You'll notice that it's um, created a display heading for me, now, as you start adding fields from multiple areas and multiple um, classes that link together, um, you'll notice that it's grabbed the actual field name, usual name, and it's put a space between any capitals and it's capitalized each of the words. So the, reason, the main reason I'm bringing that up uh, is uh, if I was to go add the job manager's usual name, it will also try and name it usual name. So normally I would come in and say, well, we're just gonna call this account manager. You can also drag and drop or, or um, reorder. So I can come in here and say, well, let's put that just after the customer. So I can do that. You can add trees and you'll notice um, it's still got that tree icon and in brackets um, telling you it's a tree. So there's quite a uh, uh, um, uh, in your face uh, example there. Uh, and if there were user, to field, user defined fields on this class, you would see them also. Now, one of the other options you can see um, is that little um, arrow or expanding option isn't just on the reference or my fields. So if I was just to um, potentially uh, head on back to uh, back up to the job level, 
and look at say the modified timestamp. So I'm gonna add that to my, um, my screen here and I'm just gonna quickly go over to my preview and hit run. So that's gonna go through, currently it's the entire collection. I'll explain that in just a moment. But as this comes up and I scroll across to my modified timestamp, maybe I'm not overly interested in the time. You know, and I want it in a specific format. I'm not, maybe I'm just not happy with how that, um, how that looks in my preview. So instead of just dragging the modified timestamp, every field, whether they be the reference, dates, um, text boxes, um, numeric fields, etc., have that expand icon. So if I come into that and expand it, timestamps have a number of different options. So some of those, uh, show it as a date. So it'll strip off the time related fields. Um, alternatively, if I was just interested in the time, I could just show the time. But if I come in and just show the date, I can do that. Um, and once again, I can come in and rerun this. Now, you've got the ability of creating queries, which I'll get to shortly. Um, so let's go and just limit that down uh, to a much smaller run here. It will tell you it's waiting for results. Um, one of the benefits, uh, additional benefits of the new query designer is these queries can be run via the task queues. So it isn't adding extra um, uh, resource strain on your own machine um, for those bigger queries. So I can see that date has stripped the time now um, and away it goes. So that is um, the data view uh, area. You can add as many different um, fields as you'd like. You can call them what you'd like, order them how you need to. Um, and you also have access to not just standard database fields, which you can see in tools like jQuery, um, uh, but you've also got access to those non-parameterized methods I was referring to earlier, and also what's referred to as these, which are available uh, through custom scripts um, within GreenTree, which is how I've got some of these costs, estimates, um, um, calculations being estimate remaining and percent complete. So all of those uh, four fields are currently um, pieces of code going and getting the numbers I'm interested in. As I said before, you do have this permissions option. So if I come in uh, and have a look, on this JC job view, you, you'll notice it's only available to the super user and you've got an available and an edit option. So you can define who's allowed to see these queries and views versus who's allowed to edit these queries and views. So right now that JC job view is not available um, to Amanda. I'm logged in as Amanda over here. So when I go to my query results viewer, um, and go to this JC job view. Uh, um, you'll notice that I don't have a query that I've got access to. So we can limit that right down and that's on any query or view, which does mean that you've got uh, a much deeper um, security um, model around that that you can use. Now you can also use teams uh, if you wish. So it's not just users. So if you had specific teams, maybe um, project managers, you could set them as a team or something else like that. There is an import export option. So you can import and export these um, queries, these views, um, and uh, create them potentially in a, a test environment and import them into a live environment after the fact. So you can play around with these a fair bit. Um, you do have the option of sending once, the, once again these to Excel um, if that's what you're interested in. But this does give you a little bit more options around those totals, as I said before, I can see down the bottom. So that's showing all records. Uh, and apologies, one last thing I did want to um, touch on in, in that screen, uh, leaving that uh, JC job view again, with that entire collection. So with um, jQuery, one of the benefits and, and reasons why people use it is it's um, system-wide, um, so you've got the ability of also having 
system-wide queries within the new query designer. Um, so you'll see here that some of these are showing in blue. So those are read-only at the moment. I can't drill into them because they belong to another company. Now, for, of course, if I was doing a query that showed multiple companies, um, then I'd probably want to show the company name or code there. The ones that are in black here, I have access to. So I can see this one here and double click. So there's that drill down capability from here also. Okay. So how do we then limit those down? Let's uh, once again, bring up a bit of a, here's one I prepared earlier. So I'm gonna start with the, the top level here. So this JT job query that I have set up. We've got that data elements and that's the same as what we went through before. It's all the different fields that are available. And you'll see on my query on the left-hand side, um, I can filter on um, various information. I've got uh, what we call runtime variables, which has a thing called um, current user and current company. So I've currently got it that when I'm using this um, job query, it checks the job's company to the one that's currently uh, in use. So when I run um, this query in eComputers Australia, it will only return jobs in eComputers Australia. So yes, um, uh, you do have the ability of, of running these cross companies, but of course you still have the ability of limiting that down. And that doesn't require me to, every time I run this query, enter the company code as a, as a parameter or something of that nature. I still have those permissions that we went through before. So who's got access to this query, both from a view and an edit perspective. And you've got the ability within this to have much more complex uh, queries or filters than in any of the um, tools we've, we've shown so far. So previously, we showed in jQuery um, that I could do some querying on some fields. And as I said, you couldn't mix your ands and your ors. In Explorer, you also can't mix your ands and your ors, whereas in Query Builder, you can. So maybe I'm only interested in the jobs in the current company, but I may also only be interested in, and if I come in here and create what we refer to as a subgroup, I may only be interested in where the profit center And let's go with the code. And I can drag and drop that. And say so I'm only interested where the code is equal to 0101 or is equal to um, 0301, which is just some pro uh, profit center codes I've got in my demonstration system. So it's going to, they have to be in the current company and only where they meet these profit centers. Now you can go down as far down as you wish and you can have as many of these subgroups as you'd like, with each subgroup being able to be um, an and or an or. You've also got the ability, if I just uh, bring up uh, a slightly different query, I've got one based on the job manager here. So I can see that I've got, um, no one has to enter any filters here. It's checking where the green tree user assigned to the job manager is one of those runtime variables I went through before, being the current user, and where the jobs company is the current company. So when I come into the preview and I say, let's go have a look at this query, you'll notice that it's only found two records that, that I am the project manager and it's in the company I'm currently logged into. Now, those types of queries will be quite handy to make things uh, relatively generic. So you can create one job manager query and when job managers log in, they can only see their jobs. Um, but maybe you want to still be able to have some additional level, level of uh, filtering, but you don't want to give users access to create them. So I've come in and I've created one based on uh, quotes. So let's come in here and select my quote query. So same as before, I've said I'm only interested in the current company, but this time you'll notice I'm using, um, it's telling me here, a parameter called minimum confidence. 
So for those unfamiliar with quotes within MYB Greentree, there is a confidence percentage. So maybe I'm doing some form of pipeline um, report or extract here, and I'm only interested in quotes that are above a certain confidence percentage, or maybe are a part of a certain stage. I've gone and created a parameter where the default minimum confidence percentage is 20%. And that query is relatively simple. The entered confidence percentage is greater than or equal to that parameter. And those parameters, I can just drag and drop just like any data element. When I go to my preview section and I say, let's run this query, the first thing it does is pops up the list of parameters. If there was multiple, I would get the option of uh, entering multiple parameters worth of information here. So if I hit OK, that's gone through. I make the screen a little bigger, showing me all the quotes, and there's 12 um, that are in the current company, and the confidence percentage is above 20%. If I was to drop that right down to maybe only 5%, I can now see that there's 17. So there were some additional quotes that are now being included. So this gives you the option of still giving users some level of flexibility as far as how they do their queries um, without having to A, give them access to design their own queries, or B, have them need to um, uh, deal with the complexity of creating queries. Okay, so that's the, the, the view builder and the query builder. Those are the two things you need to do um, to get um, the query designer to work. The query results viewer will give you the option of viewing all the views that you have access to and all the queries um, that you have access to. So I can come into that job manager or that quote query um, that I was just in before. And I'm only interested in this view. So you can mix and match your queries and your views. You may have, for example, a very short customer listing view, but then you may have a more detailed um, outstanding balances view. So they may, you may decide um, to use the same filters on both, making things a little easier. So that's where you can mix and match as you need to. If I hit run, I've still got that option of show the first um, thousand, just like Explorer, but I can also untick that box if I'm interested in that also. Hit run, enter my confidence percentage, and OK, and it returns the information. So this is the screen that you would give access to to your everyday type of users. You can give them access to um, any data within uh, Greentree. Um, you've got the ability of limiting that down using that security model uh, and really make the user experience a much easier process. You do have a query designer manager, so you can come in and see who was the, um, the modifier of the previous uh, or the recent queries or views. Um, but the main reason you might come in here is you can come in and kick multiple um, and hit export or import. So you can import from a file or export. So as I said, if you do have a number of queries or views that you're creating in a test environment, um, you can easily um, uh, move those from your test to your live or your live to your test. So one of the other areas we're touching on today is, um, is, the, is the ODBC. So the ODBC is uh, the ability to access green tree data using SQL queries in tools that have what's referred to as ODBC connections. Now those tools could be Excel, they could be Microsoft Access, they could be uh, ClickView or ClickSense. So um, Norman mentioned a little earlier, we won't be going into any, um, any uh, major level of detail in uh, those tools like ClickView and ClickSense. However, I might bring them up purely to show you the ODBC element of those tools and how they may come into play. So the reason why I'm talking about this before I jump out of Greentree is part of Query Designer allows you to um, expose the views and queries that you've created to the ODBC. So one of the things um, to keep in mind when we start looking at the, the ODBC, and I'll, I'll, I'll be giving some, some 
live examples is that the classes or tables, depending on what terminology you're used to, um, uh, you have to build the links with the ODBC. Within GreenTree's reporting tools and query tools, those links are already built. Now, we often refer to those as reference or my fields. So you may have noticed previously when I was on the query uh, view or designer, um, you saw the ability on the job to see my account manager. So that linked to the JC employee class. If you were to use ODBC, um, I'd say natively, um, without this tool, you would have to manually link those tables, uh, which isn't overly difficult, but if you're not that familiar with database structures, it's an added level of complexity. The query designer allows you to build your queries. Um, and if I bring up a, an example here, I've got a customer view called customer ODBC, which if I drill down into, I'm showing fields, for example, the company code, the customer code name, their address, which I can see belongs to a my, their payment terms, which belongs to a my. So there's a lot of different tables that this, um, this view is exposing the salesperson table it's using trees which for those that have done odbc um, reports before trees can be quite complex this really simplifies that process so you build your view just like we went through before and you can assign them to a what well, you can create your own table name select the data view and query that you wish to use and then that's now exposed now, the table name is relatively important um, because that's, that's what you're going to be looking for in the next step. I tend to, when I'm creating my own ODBC um, tables to expose, I prefix them with two capital A's because it puts them at the top of the list and I'm lazy and it makes it nice and easy to find them. Don't tell Norman I'm lazy. Um, so, traditional ODBC. Standard Excel, if I come into my um, data tab, I've got the ability of creating queries. So let's go have a look at one that I've uh, already created. Uh, let's go with you. So once again, I'm trying to uh, um, balance that knife edge of um, overly complex and, 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 and so on. So this has gone and grabbed the company code, the company name, the customer code, the customer name, and the salesperson. So you would think that's relatively simple information to be gathering. However, I have to get it from three separate tables. I have to get it from the company table, the customer table, and the salesperson table, and I then have to link them. So I've got to do, for example, where the customer's my salesperson is the salesperson's OID, or object ID. And you'll see the same where I've linked the companies. So once again, it's not a, a um, extremely complex query here. Query, um, uh, query here. However, uh, if you aren't um, SQL minded or database focused, um, that can be once again an added level of complexity. If I go have a look at my um, my other one, which is showing me that. ODBC view that I dropped out and have a look at its properties. Now I've got a, I've got more fields here than I did in the previous screen. However, there's the, the, the from section is simply one table. So how easy is it to actually make these? Well, let's go and create one. So I come in here and I say, let's create um, an ODBC query. It's going to ask me which um, uh, data source I want to use. So I'm, I'm obviously using GreenTree in this example, and my username and password. Once again, I, I, the reason why I like to put the, the double A at the start is because it puts it at the top. Now I can come in here and either pick the fields, and you'll notice it's the field names I gave it. So company code, if I scroll down, um, I'll see name, I'll see salesperson, and so on. Now I can come in and I can just say, show me the whole thing. Next, 
I can do some um, filtering within um, the query tool if I need to, but let's hit next because I've already done that within my query designer. And I can do some sorting. So I can say maybe sort by the uh, company code and then sort by the um, customer code. Hit next, put it into my Excel spreadsheet. Now that's going to go talk to Green Tree and dump that data in. As I potentially change records, so if I come in and look at, um, let's go with this uh, top customer, customer 1000 here and company one. And let's change their, uh, their first line of the address because that's the, the first column. Next time I refresh my data, you'll notice that, that 123 Made Up Street has populated. So this is a way of getting data into Excel or other tools like ClickView or ClickSense um, and using complex queries, but taking the complexity out of the picture. Because as I said, you can build that complexity into the data views within, uh, within GreenTree. It also means if you are looking at um, doing reports and potentially you've got someone who isn't familiar with the Green Tree database, so maybe you've got someone in IT that's very good with Excel or very good with Access and you wanted to create um, or crystal reporting or any form of reporting tool outside of Green Tree. Maybe they're quite handy um, with those tools, but they don't know anything about Green Tree or how to link the tables. You being a Green Tree user can create these views. You can keep them very simple, keeping them all together at the top, and you can effectively um, create all the links where needed um, without the um, uh, the person without the Green Tree experience having to know that information. Okay. So um, that is ODBC, both in its traditional form as well as within um, using the Query Designer ODBC exposure. So. Let's open it up to questions and I'll just open this up. Okay. Uh, first question, where can I find Jade Query? Good question. Um, so Jade Query can be found on the system, utilities, Jade Query. You do need, of course, to have access to jQuery, um, but that is um, that is where it's accessed from. Okay, next question. Uh, do query tools have access to task scheduling? Um, at this stage, no, they do not. So um, all of the uh, query tools that we've um, talked about so far, so whether that be jQuery, um, Explorer, or Query Designer, all the tools within GreenTree do not have scheduling capabilities. However, you can, using the ODBC exposure, use other tools such as ClickView, Microsoft Access. Um, I haven't tried it with Excel. You might be able to do it with Excel as well, but you can use those tools to schedule um, uh, the, the export. Okay, next question. What version of GreenTree do we need to ha uh, have to limit HR access in Jade Query? Uh, we don't have it in our version. Um, I'll, I'll have to double check, or, or I said, should say triple check. Um, I believe it is 2019.3.0. Um, that is the version I'm currently using. Uh, it wasn't uh, in 2019.1. Uh, the reason why I have to double check is because it may have been in the in the version that 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 split those two, but uh, I'm fit at least 2019.3. Um, if you are um, interested in HR access to jQuery, then that quite clearly suggests that you have the HR and payroll modules. Um, and being um, upgrade season for HR and payroll due to the changes to things like single touch payroll and such, um, if it's not in your current version, then when you upgrade to get the latest HR and payroll uh, changes, then of course it will be in that version. Okay, I 
I can't seem to find Explorer anymore. I know we had it, or used to have it, uh, but can't find it now. Okay, so the way we get access to that now uh, is by coming into um, user maintenance. And let's just bring up Amanda here and hit user preferences. Uh, on menu security, there is a tick box to say Explorer preferences and enabled, as well as the option of saying what is their default object to, objects to load are. So you'll notice that the object to load, which I, I mentioned earlier, is currently set at 1000. If you are um, a green tree user and your system um, has large data sets in areas that you wish to do Explorer queries and 1000 is not sufficient as your default, then by all means, you can change that. You could change that to 10,000, 100,000, whatever is appropriate uh, for you as a user. Okay, uh, next. Uh... Sorry, I found it. Okay, we don't have Query Builder. What version do we need for that? That so the Query Builder came out in the latest release, so 2019.3.0. So um, the I believe it's the exact same version that the Jade Query changes. Um, uh, the HR um, limiting data in Jade Query came out. Um, does the security on que uh, Query Copy when you create a new user from another user? Or do you have to manually tick the query on the new user? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you would have to manually tick it on the user. Um, one of the things I would potentially suggest uh, if you are creating queries that are used for groups of people rather than individuals is the use of teams. So you can create um, teams and when you copy the user uh, by default, they would have the same teams and therefore the same access. Um, it also means you can very easily add or remove people from um, queries. Uh, further to that point, um, if I just bring up the view builder screen and look at the permissions, you'll notice the teams list is currently showing no teams. However, my demonstration system, I do actually have some. So under system, system setup, team maintenance, there is a tick box that says ignore for security settings. Okay, so all of them, so that's a, a relatively new tick box um, and that came in ticked by default. So when, uh, when it was added, um, uh, that was uh, automatically ticked. So all teams will have that ticked by default when you upgrade to a version with that setting. So for me to have the admin team show up in my permissions, I simply untick that box and refresh the screen and you'll know, notice that that's available and edit for that team. Okay, thanks. Uh, Josh, noticing we do not have Query Builder available in utilities. We are running Jade version 7.1.9. How do we enable access to view this tool? Um, I'd have to confirm um, the uh, uh, the Jade version. I, I know the Green Tree version for the new tool, as I said, 2019.3.0. Um, however, if it's not showing up in your system utilities um, query designer, it sh once again, if you bring up user maintenance and go to oh, that's team user maintenance under user preferences menu security, um, you can search. So if I come in here and hit search for query designer, it will find the first one. Uh, that was Jade Query, but here we go, query designer, and I can tick on or off at any one of those levels. So as I said before, potentially for um, everyday users, you only have results viewer turned on, uh, but for admin type users, you may have all of them turned on. All right, next. Um... Background SQL, crystal reports, business objects. Is there a data dictionary or similar available to locate the various fields within the Jade database? Um, the the answer to that question uh, is is unfortunately a little vague. Um, there did used to be uh, a relatively simple data dictionary. Well, it didn't cover all of Green Tree data. Um, that is currently only available in PDF format. So if you do get in contact with your system consultant, 
um, they should be able to assist you with that document. Um, it is currently, uh, and the reason why I said the answer is a little vague, is unfortunately that document is currently not maintained. So as new fields are added, um, they are not being updated on that document. So um, uh, that is, but it's still um, at least a starting point. The other tool that we see heavily used um, to, from a, a data dictionary-esque type tool uh, is what's referred to as inspector. So if I bring up the customer maintenance screen and bring up a customer, there's this icon here called inspector, and that will then list all the fields that are available on that class. And if I click on them, it will then preview the field um, based on the record I selected. So I can see that, that customer's address was 123 Made Up Street. Now, um, it's not a true data dictionary uh, because um, it's not just other than looking, um, it's, it's not showing me what I'm interested in um, specifically. However, the fields are 99% of the time uh, well, uh, well named. So address line 123 is address 123, code's code, name's name. But every now and then um, you do have to, um, there might be a generic field name because it's used for multiple things um, that you need to find. Will OBD see uh, lock class records for co-current process? And is this running locally or via task processor? Okay, so the ODBC um, uh, will, that's a, that's a very good question, uh, will it lock records? I might have to confirm the locking records part. Um, I, I don't believe it does. Uh, but I would I would want to confirm that before that, uh, just saying that. So I'll um, okay, yeah. that one. Um, so uh, what I'd suggest um, is um, if you want to shoot a, an email off to your systems consultant um, and and we can follow that up. Uh, is it running locally or via the task processor? Um, it doesn't run via the task processor, um, uh, but it does run via uh, what's referred to as the application server. So it's not running locally, but it's not running via the task processor. Okay. Uh, what version needed to right, so run? So answered that one. That. Yep. Uh, can Query you... builder access user and team details. Yep. Um, so yes, that can... Um, uh, uh, I'm not 100% certain if that question is whether or not you can um, query those areas or just use them from a permission standpoint. Um, if you want to just... Um, uh, confirm which area you're interested there. However, uh, the classes are available, whether, but whether or not every single field is, um, is another story. Is there a limit uh, of records on the ODBC, OB, ODBC query designer on the uh, thin client? No, there is not. Um, you can, um, as, as many as you would like. Uh, there, there is, uh, the larger the data set that you're querying on, um, for example, the GL Journal uh, class or table uh, is by far the largest table pretty much in any Korean tree database. Um, if you query that without any filtering, it may take some time. Um, that time is heavily dependent, as I said, on, um, on your data size. Uh, is Jade still the only way to query on collections, e.g. if I want to show cost lines with a specific activity code for a job? Um, uh, so that, uh, I'm assuming that question is referring to jQuery specifically. Um, so no, um, it, the new query uh, designer uh, does give you the option of selecting uh, classes. So uh, in that specific example, that would be the um, JC cost line item class, um, and you could do a query on that also. Okay, we're just about out of time, but uh, I think we'll keep going to couple get through all the questions. Yep. Uh, can you run a query across different modules? The yeah, CRM and AR in Query Designer. Um, the the query, uh, as long as the records you are querying have a link across those modules, then by all means you can do that. So if I do look at the um, the customer, uh, let's go with um, the customer OWC one here, for example. Um, if I come into the uh, CRM organization, I could show some of the CRM information on the the customer record. Uh, so yes, you can um, 
query or view records across modules and suites. Okay, can you populate a desktop tile off a query view? Unfortunately, no, not at this stage. That would be, uh, it's, it's definitely something that I, I, I think would be a great benefit, but no, unfortunately not at this stage. Okay, uh, do we have uh, 2019.3.0 but query designer is missing? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so that's that's probably um, just a security um, uh, option. So uh, what I'd suggest is get in contact with your system consultant uh, and just confirm um, uh, if you can't find that setting or don't have access to user maintenance. If you do have access to user maintenance, um, as I said, you should be able to find that in the menu security area. Can QB be used to export details per class? Um, no. Uh, you could... Um, uh, dad dictionary can so you could um, I mean you can export as much uh, many fields as you would like um, but uh, if you wish to um, kind of create a pseudo data dictionary um, you would need to uh, potentially create a view uh, within um, within green trees view builder naming the fields uh, in a in a in a, a name that you determine. Um, you can then export all of those using the OWC exposure if you wish, um, but it's not, once again, it's not a true data dictionary, unfortunately. Um, okay. Is there a simple way, way to pull a query that is related to a free upload? Is there a simple way to pull a query that is related to a free upload? Um, I'm not 100% certain where that question uh, is leading. Um, so, uh, the Excel add-in being free and the ODBC um, options within Excel aren't linked in any particular way. Uh, so what I mean by that is um, whether or not you're importing things using um, the financial reporting engine in Excel, also known as free, um, or not, that doesn't give you access or not access to ODBC and vice versa. If you import something via free, and you want to then potentially show that information um, imported in Excel in some way, then um, you would have to have an ODBC connection of some variety, potentially doing a query on the same classes that you were importing. Um, so maybe, and I'm just throwing, because I've said not 100% certain where this question is going, but maybe you wanted to know um, the records that were imported some level of detail against them, then you could do some kind of query where the modified timestamp is you know, greater than or equal to a couple of minutes ago. And it will just show you the records that you've now created. Okay. That if, appears... that, does, if that doesn't answer your question, uh, obviously feel free to get in contact with your systems consultant uh, and they can get me involved if uh, required. Okay. That appears to be the last question on the list. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, submitting all the questions. The, uh, the more questions we get, the uh, more everyone gets out of uh, these webinars. Um, as Josh uh, said, if you do have any questions or ones that uh, we haven't answered to your satisfaction, uh, please uh, send an email direct to your uh, uh, consultant that you mainly deal with and they can answer or uh, refer it to uh, Josh. Um, this webinar has been recorded and we will be sending out a, a link to the recording within the next 24 hours. Uh, and in due time, we will be posting on our website and our YouTube channel as well, if you ever need to refer to it again. If you have any more uh, suggestions for appropriate topics, please feel free to email them to me direct. My email is quite easy. It's norman.hall at star.cd, and we'll put it on the list to um, uh, consider for future webinars. So once again, thank you for attending and uh, have a great day.